you are about to find out, like, where do I get all these ideas from? And what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about, like, the framework in the Bible that I got the outline for my TEDx talk from. And when you begin to understand the Bible is not just um, stories, it's not about religion, it's like, it's a guidebook. When you get that, it changes everything. Because then when you read the Bible, you're looking for frameworks, you're looking for instructions, you're looking for patterns and principles and promises and precepts. You're looking for, how do I do this thing called life? And it's all in there. Um, and it's so interesting because like one person would hear me give this presentation from my TEDx talk, and they'd say, oh, that's cognitive behavioral psychology. Well, you might call it that, but it was in the Bible before a cognitive behavioral psychologist ever thought he'd thunk it up, right? And so, so I'm gonna share with y'all um, where I got that from. So it's, it's interesting, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it, that is by faith, the elders obtained a good report. But what does it say next? By faith, we understand. I want you to just, I just want you to breathe that in for a minute. By faith, we understand. It did not say by understanding we have faith. See, a lot of people think, well, I will believe, I will believe as soon as I understand. Well, I got news for you. You don't get to understand until you believe, right? That's why the scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because it starts with an awareness. It starts with faith in the one who is faithful. Anyway. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds, plural, were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Frame, a frame is something that is, it's, the, it's, a, it's not the foundation, but it's the structural edifice that you put all the other stuff on. And it says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed. What worlds? So that things which are seen. That's one world. We're not made of things which do appear. That's the other world. So we got physical, we got the physical world, and we have the invisible world. And it says that the things which are seen are not made of things which do appear, which means the foundational, the framework of everything is invisible. It's spiritual. Spirituality is reality. Physicality is not reality. Physicality is the manifestation of reality. So it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are were not made of things which do appear, which means the better we understand the things that which are not seen, the better we can understand the things we're seeing. Are y'all tracking? So start looking for biblical foundational frameworks to understand life better, and then you will do life better. So, um, for those of you who have seen my TEDx talk, and I'm not going to do the whole thing uh, the way I did it then, but it basically, I'm, I'm going I'm to draw the whole picture on the board, then I'm going to give you the Bible verse that it came from, and then I'm going to show you how, like, how I activate this concept in my life on a daily basis, how you can activate it in your life on a daily basis. So the, the name of my TEDx talk is The Master Key to Influence, How to Overcome Procrastination in Yourself and Others. Now, so why did I name it that? Why did I name it the master key to influence? What is influence? Influ influence is your ability to develop in someone the desire to follow you or to trust you or to listen to you. That's what influence is. You're developing in somebody, whether that somebody is somebody else or whether that somebody is yourself, you're developing in somebody a desire to follow you, listen to you, trust you. Right? Are y'all tracking? Wave at me if you're tracking. Okay. So, so, so when I say when I say the master key to influence, now I, you know I'm talking about influencing me, whether I'm influencing me to not procrastinate, or whether I'm influencing you not to procrastinate. See, parents, when they're dealing with their children, they want their children to do something. They don't want that children. They don't want that children. They don't want that child to procrastinate. When I'm when I've got something that has to get done, I don't want me to procrastinate. A business person who's, who's, who's closing a deal doesn't want the person on the other side of that deal to procrastinate. So when I talk about the master key to influence, that's why I'm talking about it as the master key to influence and not as cognitive behavioral psychology. I, I didn't even know that's what it was until somebody told me that. Uh, and that's why I'm not talking about it as, as just um, a Bible verse to memorize so we can know we know it, but as something we can take action on every day. If you're tracking, let me hear you say I'm tracking. Okay, cool. So, so this is you, or, or this, this is you or me, right? And this is the facts. 
Okay, now, here's, what, here's what's interesting about facts. Every fact, the fact is that every fact has a positive side and a negative side. That's fact. So when the facts have a negative side and a positive side, what happens is you or me, we observe the fact. And when we observe the fact, the first thing we do is we put a frame around that fact. Okay, so we put a frame around the fact. When we put a frame around that fact, that frame determines how we feel about it. See, I'm going to tell you something. By the way, if you get this, it'll change your life for the rest of your life. If you get this one thing I'm about to say, it'll change your life for the rest of your life. Okay? And that is, uh, if your attitude is right, the facts don't matter. Now, you say, well, come on, Myron, that, that can't be. Okay. If your attitude is right, the facts don't matter. Why? Because the frame that you put around the fact has more to do with how you feel about the fact than the fact itself does. Did y'all hear what I just said? The frame you put around the fact has more to do with how the fact affects you than, than just how you feel about the fact. Like you're, you're, it has, it'll control how you feel about the fact more than the fact itself. The fact is just the fact, okay? So you're gonna look at the fact and you're either gonna focus on the positive aspect of the fact, which is gonna make you happy, or you're going to focus on the negative aspect of the fact, and it's going to make you sad. Okay? Are you all tracking with me so far? Okay. So if I'm focused on the fact, the focus is not the fact. The focus is in my head. So I have a focus in my head about the fact. That focus in my head it manufactures something. It causes my mind to manufacture a belief. Now, belief is a two-sided coin. It also has a positive aspect and a negative aspect. If I'm focused on the negative aspect of the fact, it's going to cause me to have a positive belief. That positive belief is commonly known as faith. If I'm focused on the negative aspect of the fact, it's going to cause me to have a negative belief, and that negative belief is called doubt. Here's the part people don't get. Faith and doubt are both belief. Most people erroneously think that faith is belief and doubt is the absence of belief. But faith is not belief and doubt the absence of belief. Faith is belief in the outcome I desire. Doubt is belief in the outcome I don't desire. How many of y'all tracking? Wave at me, my peeps. So, so, so even people who doubt believe something. They just believe the unfavorable outcome. They, and see, here's what happens. The reason we get negative and down in the dumps and put our makeup on upside down, right? <laughs> And, and looking all sad and mad and depressed and downhearted, and, and, uh, or as my mom and dad would say, uh, broke down, busted, and disgusted, and Monday and Tuesday can't be trusted. The reason we look like that is because we're focused on the negative aspect of the fact. It's not because the fact is negative. The fact cannot be just negative. It cannot be just negative. It's not possible. It's not possible for anything to only have one side. Have you ever seen a one-sided coin? Have you ever seen a one-sided piece of paper? Have you ever seen a one-sided piece of bread? Have you ever eaten a one-sided pancake? No. Why? Because it cannot exist. In order for anything to exi exist, it has to have two sides. And when I'm, focused on, when I'm focused on the positive aspect of the fact, it causes me to manufacture a belief called faith, and that belief called faith, it empowers me by, by traveling down and creating a feeling, a feeling in my heart. And this feeling in my heart is going to manifest itself either as, if I'm focused on faith, if I'm focused on the positive aspect of the fact, I'm manufacturing a belief called faith, that feeling is going to be anticipation. Anticipation is like one of your greatest assets. The ability to anticipate. Okay, so... So I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're communicating with people is they say words and then they define the word. But if I, if I, can, if I can show you a picture of the word, that's better. How many of y'all would agree with that? Yes? Okay, so here's a picture of the word. Do you remember on Christmas Eve, you know, the Christmas when you snuck into your parents' room and you knew what you were getting? Do you remember how excited you were on Christmas Eve to wake up the next day and open the thing you knew you were going to get? How many of y'all remember that? Right? Okay, so here's what's fascinating. Here's what's fascinating. My parents, I don't know about your parents. Your parents were probably not as sadistic as mine. But my parents would always make us go to bed early on Christmas Eve. Like earlier than any other day of the year. I'm like, 
but we're not sleeping. Go to bed. Well, we went to bed. Oh, no, no, no. So, no, we, our, our house was not a democracy. We didn't get votes. <laughs> no, no. There were two votes in my house, my mom's and my dad's. And that's it. We didn't get votes. We just did what they told us. Um, <laughs> I think I think about kids today who say to their parents, like the parent tells them to do something, they say, what's the magic word? My, the magic word for my parents was, go do what I told you. <laughs> my dad would say, I don't have no magic words, but I got a magic belt. <laughs> right? Anyway, anyway, so magic word. I would, I, I would be some kind of out my mind to ask, to ask my dad to tell me a magic word. <laughs> I wish he thought it. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I digress. Okay. And so we went to bed early, but the only thing we couldn't do when we went to bed was go to sleep. Why? Because our anticipation of the outcome of the next day's events energized us. So here's what you, here's like, like take this home with you. Anticipation of a favorable outcome produces energy to complete any task. Are you tracking Authors say, I've got writer's block. You don't have writer's block. You're just not expecting the book to sell. If you knew you were going to sell a million copies next week, you'd get the book done today. How many of y'all tracking? It's, it's a lack of anticipation that contributes to procrastination. Okay, so, but if I'm focused on the negative aspect of the fact, I'm going to manufacture a belief called doubt. And the belief of doubt is going to cause me to have a totally different feeling in my heart. That feeling is called anxiety. And by the way, I know some of you have seen my TEDx talk. You think I'm doing the same thing right now. I'm not. I'm showing you where this came from, but I'm also showing you how to apply the lessons that I taught in my TED talk. Because in my TED talk, TEDx talk, I only had 18 minutes. So I had 18 minutes. And right before I went on stage, somebody took my, my flip chart and then put it in a different room. And I was late and I had to catch a plane. And I forgot to look at my watch when I got started because there was all this disruption that followed my intention. So in 14 minutes... I attempted to explain this whole thing in the TEDx talk. Well, now when you go watch the TEDx talk, it'll make more sense because you'll have this to refer back to, and now you'll know how to use the stuff I taught in my TEDx talk. Does that make sense? Say yes? Yeah. Okay, cool. So anxiety is the thief of your dreams. Anxiety is something we are commanded by Christ never to have. Jesus said, take no thought for the morrow. When he said, take no thought for the morrow, that word take no thought literally means don't worry about tomorrow. He said, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What does that mean? That means don't waste today's energy worrying about tomorrow's problems. Because now you've wasted today and you made yourself behind tomorrow. Are y'all tracking? In, in Philippians chapter four, it says it like this. It says, and be careful for nothing. That word be careful is the word don't have anxiety. Don't worry. It's the exact same Greek word that was used in Matthew where Jesus said, take no thought for, in Matthew chapter six, where Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. Exact same word as the word be careful for nothing. So we see it. Jesus said, the apostle Paul said it again, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, cool. So don't worry about anything. Anxiety is the thief of your dreams. Now, here's the thing about anxiety. Anx anxiety really deceives people because anxiety looks like fear, sounds like fear, smells like fear, causes the same physical reactions in your body as fear. So you think you have a fear when you actually have an anxiety. How many of y'all tracking? Wave at me, my peeps. And I'm telling you, like people say, I'm just afraid, I'm, I've got fear of success. No, you don't. I've got fear of failure. No, you don't. You can't, it's not possible to have fear of failure. It's not, like, that's not a thing. I mean, it's a thing because people call it that, but it's not a real thing. There's no such thing as fear of failure. There's no such thing as, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm afraid this might not work. I'm afraid of being, no, I'm, you're not afraid. I'm getting, ready to go on, I'm getting ready to go on stage. I'm afraid. You're not afraid. You have anxiety. There's a difference. Here's the difference. Fear is caution over a real and present danger, which means if there is no real and present danger, there can be no fear. See, most people think they have a fear of something when actually what they have is an anxiety or something. What's anxiety? Anxiety is caution over a future imagined danger. So you're imagining the future danger in such vivid detail that it's causing you to have a physical reaction in your body in the present. 
That's what anxiety is. I'm literally, I'm, I'm expecting an outcome that is not favorable to me. I'm, 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 I'm seeing that clearly in my mind and it's causing me to have a physical reaction in my body today. And here's what it is, it's waste. All worry is waste. The greater the worry, the greater the waste. Stop wasting your life worrying about anything. It's a waste. Like people say, oh, don't worry, Myron. I say, it's been so long since I worried, I forgot how to do it. Why? Because this is not something for me to know. This is something for me to do. This is a way for me to live my life every single solitary day. Worry? No, I already know worry is waste. Jesus said it's waste. So I'm either going to ignore him and pay attention to the thing I'm worried about, or I'm going to pay attention to him and like ignore the thing I'm worried about. Are y'all tracking? This, this, is how we, this is how we actually practice this. This is how we actually live this out on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, not just shout about it on Sunday and go home and start worrying again. Mm, I wish I had some help in here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down <laughs> a little bit. Okay, so, so understand, understand that, that, that when my attitude is right, my focus, the facts don't matter. My attitude is I'm going to focus on the positive aspect of the fact so I can manufacture a belief called faith and I can like shut down the manufacturing plant in my mind that manufactures doubt. Shut it down. Stop practicing it. See, one of the problems you have is you have way more practice visualizing unfavorable outcomes than you do favorable outcomes. Like you are better. You are better. You. Who? Everybody tap yourself on the chest. Say me. You are better at expecting unfavorable outcomes than you are at favorable outcomes. Would you like me to tell you why? Yes. Everybody, everybody say yes. yes. Everybody say, okay, here's why. Because you know what the unfavorable outcomes look like. You know what they feel like. You've experienced them before. Some of the favorable outcomes that you desire, you've never experienced. So you don't know how to visualize them. But here's what you got to understand. Okay, I'm going to ask you all a question. It's not a trick question. It's really simple. Okay, okay, I'm gonna ask you all a question. It's not a trick question, here it is. Who knows more, you or God? So whose word should you take in a particular situation, yours or his? Okay, see, God's already been in the future. How long have you been there? Since forever, ever since. God has already been in every day in your future since before you got here, and he ain't worried about it, so quit tripping. Is that helping anybody besides me? Like, I don't have anything to worry about. People say, but, but Myron, what, the economy, the economy, the, uh, the, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing you worried about, the economy? Okay, God owns everything. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns a thousand hills under those cattle. Here's what God said. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. Oh, you thought it was yours. <laughs> it ain't you, it's his. And he's all right. And guess what? He is my heavenly Abba. So if he's got plenty, I've got plenty. I worry about the economy. Okay, how about this? I'm in Christ, so we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Can you imagine somebody going to the Olympics? So did you, did you place the Olympics? I did. I came in first place. What did you get? I got a better than gold medal. I got a better than gold medal. Yeah, can you imagine a boxer? I am, I am, I am, I am beyond the world champion. Nobody talks like that except who? God. We are more than conquerors. We're not conquerors. We're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. The, like I don't, I'm, not, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win in this game called life. I have already won. People say, "Well, but, but, Myron, you could die. Then I really win because I have eternal life." I don't, I'm not going to get eternal life when I die. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, when, 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 when uh, Martha said to Jesus, uh, Lord, or maybe it was Mary. I don't remember which one it was. But one of the sisters, one of the lives of the sisters said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he asked a very important question. You know what he said right after that? Believest thou this? The problem ain't my ability to perform, the problem is your ability to believe. 
And the reason you don't have the ability to believe is because belief requires discipline and intention. Especially believing in something you've never seen before. You say, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, that's one way to do it. That's one way. Can I, can I tell you a more better way? Believe it so you can see it. David said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. He didn't say I had fainted, uh, I had fainted unless I had seen to believe. Seeing is believing. Yep. That's the formula for failure. Seeing is believing because you can't get any momentum. But if you start with believing, believing will cause you to see and then seeing will cause you to believe more. And now you've got some momentum. Okay, so anxiety. So the focus in my head creates a feeling in my heart and the feeling in my heart produces a function in my hands. If I'm focused on the negative aspect, positive aspect of the fact, manufactures faith, which causes me to produce a feeling called anxiety in my, I mean, anticipation in my heart, which causes me to have a function in my hands. The function in my hands is called power. I now have the power to act. See, some of y'all can't get off go because you're expecting it not to work. And you're asking yourself questions that literally rob you of your power. Like, like I'm talking about like a bank robber robs a bank at gunpoint. The questions you ask are robbing you of your ability to take action. Like questions like what? What if it doesn't work? That. I'd say this is an okay question to ask in pre preparation. It's not an okay question to ask in decision time. Are you tracking? Because in decision time, like the question is not, what if it doesn't work? The question is, how awesome is this going to be when it works? When you ask yourself better questions, what will happen is you will get better answers. And those better answers will cause you to take better actions. And those better actions will produce better outcomes. By the way, um, people say, well, you, you, um, uh, you're creating your own, you're creating your own, um, what do they call it? Creating your own reality. That, thank you. Thank you for that. You're creating your own reality. No, you're not. Stop it. You're not creating your own reality, and you're not speaking anything into existence. <gasps> did he really say that? I did. Because speaking something into existence is bara. Bara. The only person in Scripture who barahs is God. Are y'all tracking? So I can't speak something into existence. I can't create my own reality. Here's what I create. I create my own experience in reality. And the words that I say affect the experience that I have while I'm experiencing reality. So I have to learn how to talk better so I can learn how to walk better. Are y'all tracking? Let me, hear you. Let me hear somebody say, I'm, I'm tracking. I'm tracking. Okay. So, so, so when, the, when the focus in my head manufactures faith, the feeling in my heart is anticipation, the function of my hand is power. But when the focus in my head, I'm focusing on the negative aspect of the fact, it's going to cause me to manufacture the belief of doubt, and doubt is causing me to have anxiety, and anxiety produces the function of my hand of powerlessness. I become powerless means I have less power. And I'm telling you, this, this is where most people live. This is like, like this is the, you want to win in life? This is it. This is it. You have to learn how to act as if the only thing that's impossible for you is that something would be impossible for you. I'm not giving you a motivational speech. I am giving you biblical doctrine, and I'm showing you a step-by-step -step process how to activate it. Not just shout about, hallelujah, whoa, praise God. Well, that's good. But shout about something you're going to do something about. Don't just talk about it, walk about it. So, where did all that come from? Romans chapter 17. <laughs> I mean, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 17, says, like, he, and I don't remember the first part of the verse, and my iPad, I don't have my iPad, it says something like, um, you were in sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. That's where I got this whole thing from. You've obeyed from the heart. You've obeyed from the heart. What's that? That's the power in your hand. You've obeyed. That's a function. From the heart, right? That's the feeling of anticipation that was delivered you. That's the, focus, the, the form of doctrine. The doctrine is the focus in your head. See, I believe if people knew better, they could do better. Can I get a witness? Like, if people knew better, they could do better. And one of the problems is, like, like we, we have, we have, we have, we have moved away from the practical application of Scripture in our lives to feeling good about the fact 
that we know something good is going to happen in the future when something good could be happening based on this word right now, right now. But I got to do something. See, the Bible, I, we got any coders in here? We got any coders? Any coders? Okay, well, one of the things when you, I, I was going to, I wanted to be a computer programmer, right? Okay, we got a coder. Okay, so you know what an if-then-go-to statement is, right, Diamond? Right, if then go to, right? If then, like what you, what you do is you, 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 you do one function and then when that function happens, it causes a chain reaction. Do you understand the Bible is filled with conditional promises that are like if then go to statements? And most people never do the if then, so they never get to go to. Because so, it's called an if then go to statement, which means if you don't then, you don't get to go to. <laughs> And here's what's really amazing about this to me. Like when I, when I get ready to do something, like my, I was talking to my brother last night. <laughs> and he said, uh, my sister-in-law said, I'm like, where did he get all that energy from? Does he, does he do nothing but create videos? Like, we just have a system. We have a system in place, right? And I'm, I fully expect what I'm working on to work. Like I fully expect, I fully expect to reach the multitudes around the world with the kingdom message. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God. Me yielding my life to God as the sovereign king of my life. And then when I yield my life to him, he gives me sovereign authority over my assignment. And I'm going to rule over that assignment with sovereign authority. And then I'm going to use that assignment that I rule over to serve every human being I come in contact with. That is why I'm here on the earth. God put me here by myself, but he did not put me here for myself. And that message is something everybody would desire to know if they only knew it existed. And I... God didn't just give me that to know it so I can live like this. He gave me a big mouth so I'd tell a whole bunch of people. <laughs> and I am telling you, like, if you will stop driving the vehicle of your life down the highway of experience with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brakes and learn how to accelerate into the curves, your life would be so magnificent. You'd make such a difference in the world. Just own it. You were created for a purpose that no one else in the history of the world could possibly fulfill. I'm a little jacked out my mind about this this morning. I'm, I'm amped. Why? Because, because I, I, like, I'm, this is, this, like, it ain't, I'm, here's what I'm saying. It ain't a secret. It's just the work that most people are unwilling to do. See, Frames create focus. So what you got to do is you got to put a frame within the frame. Put a frame within the frame of every fact. It'll change the actions that you take. It'll change how you feel about the situation, which will change how you function around that situation. And it will change the game. I, I watch people sell. I'm a, I'm a, I, do, I do sales training. You say, well, Myron, why do you do sales training? Because most people are terrible at sales. Most people in sales are terrible. It's like, the only reason you can even make sales is because they already wanted to buy it, dude. Like, like I hear people in, in sales, and they're talking, and they're talking about their product. They're talking about their pieces. They're talking about their process. They're talking about all their stuff, and nobody cares. They don't like you that much. They don't like me that much either. So you know what I do? When I'm selling, I don't talk about me. I only talk to you about you. And I get you to focus on the stuff you want. And I show you how your best chance to get the things you already want is with the stuff that I got over here is going to help you get that stuff you already want. Then it's, it's an automatic yes. See, people, people want to know scripts. You don't need to, you, 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 scripts are fine. Scripts are fine for starting. You got to start somewhere. They're fine. But here's what you really want. If you, if you knew to want it, you'd want this. Here's what you'd want. You'd want a framework. A framework that you can always go to always works. And I'm telling you, here's the framework that always works. Get the people you're selling to focused on the outcome they already desire and then show them how the thing you have helps them get that done. Period. It's a wrap. The only thing left to do is buy. But make sure, make sure the thing you're selling can get them the result. I am not one of these people who's for selling stuff to people that won't do them any good. That's why I don't do high pressure sales. I don't do high pressure sales because I feel like the people I'm selling to are smart enough or should be smart enough to know whether it's in their own best interest or not. And so I'm not going to talk you into it, right? Like, I want to do such a good job at selling that I can't even talk you out of it. I ain't going to talk you into it. I don't do any convincing when I'm selling. 
my 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 sales my my when I get to the end of showing people what I have, it looks like something like this: buy it or don't buy it. <laughs> if it makes sense to you, buy it. If it don't make sense, don't buy it. Right? Wow, that's kind of easy. <laughs> and I don't feel any pressure. Why? Because I'm not trying to get them to buy it. I'm just letting them know it exists in case they're one of the people who's supposed to hear my voice and then follow me. Right? I ain't trying to get you to buy this. Well, my aunt, I'm looking at your program and somebody else's. How do I know which one to buy? It's easy. Buy theirs. <laughs> that's what I always, you, know, you don't say every single solitary time, buy theirs. If you're that confused, buy theirs. All right? Because you ain't ready for me. <laughs> Is that too real? You ain't ready for me. You won, you won then? No, this ain't that, baby. Okay. So, so what we got to learn how to do is we got to learn how to put frames around facts that cause people to focus on the positive aspect of the fact. Oh, by the way, this is also in, I think, John 13, 17. Here's what it says. Here's what Jesus said. If you know these things, focus in your head. Happier are you, feeling in your heart, if you do them, function in the hands. See how it's a pattern? And when you learn how to use this pattern, like every situation that you look at, like you're looking at a situation, let's say you need to write a book, or you need to create a funnel, or you need to create a sales page, or, or you need to have a conversation, or you're working on getting a government contract, or whatever the thing is that you're working on, you, you need to show a house, or you need to list some houses, or whatever the thing is, you need to start your YouTube channel, or 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 you need to start your YouTube channel. Start your YouTube channel. I'm, it's called a hint. Okay, that's called a hint. Okay, uh, 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 like the reason you're putting it off is because you're focused on some negative aspect of that thing. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to focus on a positive aspect of that thing, and then it will empower you to do it. Like this, like the, this is why I call this the master key to influence. What is influence? It's something that causes people to lean in a particular direction. You're influencing it. You're changing it. You're moving it. You're nudging it. The mastery. This is the, ma this is the master key to influence, whether you want to influence yourself or whether you want to influence somebody else. This is the master key to influence, how to overcome procrastination in yourself and others. Overcome procrastination in yourself. Why? You get more done. Overcome procrastination in others. Why? Well, if you're an entrepreneur, you sell more. If you're a parent, your children behave better, like whatever. Whatever it is, like it's just, it makes your life better. It's like when I'm selling, it's like tell me yes or tell me no, but tell me now I gotta go. I don't want, I don't, I don't want, I don't want your yes, I just want your decision, but you gotta give it to me now. Are y'all tracking? And so when you learn to apply this master key to influence, here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. You will get more done in a day than you used to get done in a week. Because most people spend all the time, so, like hours and hours, like visualizing scenarios. That, well, what if it doesn't work? And oh my goodness! And then what if they do this? And, blah, 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 blah. and what if they hang up on me? And what if they uh, close the door in my face? And all. They, and then they get all worked up in this imaginary situation. They start <laughs> hyperventilating <laughs> over nothing is in your mind. I was talking to my brother yesterday. He's like, he said, Myron, I go to the golf course with you, man, but I don't like, I don't like like alligators, man. I don't like reptiles. I'm like, okay, but here's what I'm going to tell you. You have more problems with the alligators in your mind than you do the alligators on the golf course. I said, he said, how many alligators have you seen over the years playing golf? I said, hundreds. I said, I've seen hundreds of alligators. I saw some of them after they saw me. <laughs> like, whoa, I didn't know you were sitting right there. I wouldn't have came over here messing with you. Right? Right? <laughs> you know, golfers, are, golfers can be like in the zone, man. You don't see nothing but the line that you want to roll that ball on, right? Okay, anyway. So uh, I said, but I've seen hundreds of alligators. I've never had one even look remotely interested in doing anything to me. But it's the pictures that we see in our mind that cause the most problems. It's <laughs> like you, you don't understand how powerful this computer is in your mind. We went to, my brother Jeff and I, we went to uh, dinner last night and he ordered a salad with no onions. He was very specific about that. She brought, the girl brought the salad to him with onions on it. She said, well, I can take the onions off for you. I said, ma'am, you don't understand. When he said no onions, he don't want onions nowhere near there. Now, I, and I told my brother, I said, 
the same way you are about onions, I'm that way about ketchup. Like, I don't want to see ketchup when I'm eating. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to smell it. <sighs> like, <sighs> not a ketchup fan, right? And it has nothing to do with the ketchup. It's all in here. Are y'all tracking? And so most of the stuff, 99% of the things that have been stopping you are in here. They ain't out here. They in here. How many of y'all tracking? Wave at me, my peeps. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to start focusing on the positive aspect of the fact so we can manufacture a belief called faith so that faith can manufacture a feeling in our heart called anticipation. It's going to produce a function in our hands called power, and we are going to get stuff done. And our lives are going to get better because now I know how to work on me. And by the way, this works if you want to get in shape. It works if you want to get rich. It works if you want to have weight loss. It works if you want to have good relationships. It works, it works everywhere. This is how it's done. So... Hope this blesses you. By the way, go watch the TEDx talk and you'll see what I mean. I didn't have as much time to go into all these details in the TEDx talk, but I have the TEDx talk on my YouTube channel, so go check it out. Hope you stay blessed by, by the best. Watch the videos, share them, comment, like, all that other youtube stuff y'all do. And in the meantime, in between time, peace out, Cub Scout.